Welcome everybody to another episode from Go Kart Academy, and we're here with 893 Motorsports. We received a brand new Italcart, Kart, and we're gonna provide you guys an opportunity for an unboxing experience. What are some of the things that we should expect in this box? So we're gonna expect a new frame. We're gonna have gas tanks, front fender, side pods, the uh, front bumper. We'll also have the rear bumper, new wheels, um, unfortunately, this one doesn't come with tires, but hey, uh, it'll have a new sticker kit in it and uh, we'll kind of walk through everything that comes out of the box. Do most of these Italcarts carts come with wheels? Yes, they all come with brand new wheels, but due to everybody racing on different platforms, um, you're going to be able to run an LO206 or a tag cart or shifter. Mm. You all want to choose your own tire compounds and every racetrack has its own different tire compounds. So whenever you order an Italcart. cart, is this what you should expect to get without wheels? It will be what you should expect without tires, oh, without not tire. without wheels. Okay. Um, they will come with wheels. They'll come with the standard magnesium coated aluminum wheels, uh, unless you want full magnesiums, and then we can also take care of that. Cool. Well, let's get to unboxing it. Yeah, let's do it. So what we have here, we have the sticker kit. We're going to move this over here. We have the gas tank. Nice looking gas tank here. Here you go, guys. We got our uh, front nose cone or front bumper. Ooh, I like this. This these new Atal cards come with new arrow. Yeah, so this is the new 506 bodywork that comes from the Atal cart, and uh, and it has these little uh, arrow features on here to uh, keep the wind off the top of your toes as you're so going. So this down is the a new update from the 2009, right? Uh, yeah, from 2019. 2019. 2009. Where am I, guys? I don't know. <laughs> We have a front bumper support here. Here we are guys, we got our new set of wheels. So we have the magnesium coated Douglas wheels from uh, Douglas Wheel Performance. Here we go guys, we have our uh, steering column. It comes halfway assembled with uh, the front nose, the front uh, fender support as well as tie rods and uh, tie rod ends already attached. Attached to the steering column. Yep. So guys, we ordered this one with a metal rear bumper. Uh, some places allow them, some places don't. Fortunately at our track at Atlanta Motorsports Park, they're not very particular. So we do have this, but they can be ordered with a plastic rear bumper if you there you go guys, we have our first side pod. As you can see, a towel likes to go ahead and pre-assemble the, the side pod to the side pod support. Um, so that's how we like it. Makes it easier for installation. And once again, we have a second side pod. Hey guys, so we've gotten through our unboxing, a lot of it, and uh, I want to explain this chassis a little bit to you. So we ordered this chassis with PKT uh, rear axle for it set up for an LO206. So this is actually a 30 millimeter rear axle on a, a towel frame, adult frame. It comes with PKT hubs and uh, full floating rear disc. So uh, let's pull it out. Remember guys, it's always good to have a friend to help you uh, pull out your go-kart frame. You don't want to have a brand new one and uh, Hey guys, we're just gonna do a little overview of what parts we got in the box. So here we go. We have two side pods. We have our steering column, steering wheel attached with tie rods, tie rod ends, and the front nose fender support. We have a front nose cone support. Here we have our gas tanks, our brand new wheels, our front nose cone, full sticker kit, rear metal bumper. Let's get to work. All right. Hey guys, so uh, we've got our cart on the stand. We have our parts here in front of us. I like to start with the gas tank. We don't need any tools for this, for the towel carts. So basically it has a thumb screw or a screw that you can just screw off here. And uh, we'll install it on our cart. Slide it in position. Take the screw, make sure we don't cross thread, go easy as it goes, and just spin until it gets nice and snug. 
And that is the completion of installing the gas tank. Perfect, so what are we doing next? So next we'll work on this front steering column with the tie rods, and then we'll move to the nose cone. We'll go to the front bumper, side pods, bumper, and then finally the wheels. Awesome. So we're gonna start off with the, the steering column. So when it comes to installing the steering column, these are the tools we're gonna need. Hey guys, so we're gonna need our six millimeter Allen wrench, our five millimeter Allen wrench as well. We'll use a 10 millimeter box end and a 13 millimeter box end. Hey guys, so we have our steering column that's partially assembled already. I like to do this with a friend to help out, uh, holding it so you're not scratching your brand new cart. And we also, one of the nice things that we always like to do is have our tools either in the seat or on the footrest here. Make sure that they're not flying away anywhere. I'm loosening up the nut that goes on the bottom of the steering column so we can insert it into this hole where the bushing is that holds the bottom of the steering column. Peter, if you grab those, we're not scratching anything. And as it goes down, we can kind of gently set everything down and it's stable. This is gonna be a 13 millimeter nut. Please don't forget your washer. We're gonna stick it in there. Stick it in the bottom. And then we're gonna spin on loosely until we put a wrench on it so that way we do not strip out steering columns. They are not cheap. No, these steering columns are really expensive. I think we've probably gone through four. Four or five at least. Um, four or five in the last four months? Yeah. <laughs> um, so please be careful with these and uh, you know, kind of go from there. I like to use the box end side of the wrench to hold it. And then I would counter steer with the steering column. Tip that I like to do is to, if you can fit the ratcheting end of your box end underneath, without scratching anything. You can tighten it by holding one hand on the steering wheel and rotating, or you can rotate the steering wheel back and forth and just holding the box end in one place. Ooh. Get it snug, hold tight onto your steering wheel and give it a little bit of a turn, snugs up. We've got a working steering wheel. Steering wheel. That's a nice secret. We're going to attach our tie rod ends to our stub axles. You're going to require a 13 millimeter and a five millimeter Allen. Make sure that we don't lose our washers and we will slide off one bottom washer. Make sure you have a washer in between the ball joint and the stub axle. Slide through, we always want a washer on the bottom so we're not marring up the metal with our nut. Again, slowly add it on, then we'll tighten. And this kind of goes back to the same principle of using both sides so you get spin on, spun on and tightened up a little bit quicker. We'll go to the other side and we'll repeat. Hey guys, this is a pro tip. Um, don't forget to make sure that your tie rod end is underneath, again, depending on application, underneath the brake lever that actuates because then you don't have to mm. get under. So this makes it easy. Just cross these, reattach the brake actuating mechanism. Yes, that's what's called. And slide that back in so later when we set the pedals, we know it's all there. Again, same with the other side. We're just going to loosen, make sure we have all the washers on, make sure we have a wash on top of the ball joint on the bottom down into the stub axle. Got one washer on the bottom. K 
careful to make sure this is not cross-threaded. And we'll tighten it up with our 13 millimeter wrench and five millimeter Allen wrench. Next step is we're gonna install the steering column onto the go-kart. We'll start with loosening up this bolt. Being careful not to scratch your new go-kart and keeping a hand on all the parts like I did there. <laughs> Rotate this around. Again, these are things that we can set. It's all preferential as to the height you want your steering wheel and how you want it. I like to start with the longest setting or the farthest away setting, depending on who your customer is or who's going to be using the go-kart. We hold that We pick one side up. It is nicer to have it at the long side, especially when you're fitting a brand new driver in there. That way they're not squeezed by their legs up against the steering wheel. Correct. So next step for us guys is we're gonna be installing our front bumper support, our side pods and front bumper. Let's go get some tools over here, Peter. So for this, we're gonna need our handy 10 millimeter box end wrench. We're gonna need a five millimeter Allen and we'll also need a four millimeter Allen. Let's get to it. Hey guys, we uh, have our lower front bumper support. This is very easy. We're just gonna slide it in to the specified marks. Sometimes it's on the other side, flip it around. If it doesn't fit exactly, it should go. We want it to be snug, slightly tap it in. There we go. We'll install our bolts. So we had this installed, we used our nice handy rubber mallet to kind of tap it in place, make sure the holes are all aligned. From there, we're just gonna slide our bolt in, add a washer on each side. Here, I'll take a bolt or a nut and gently spin it on before we tighten it down. We're gonna need our five millimeter Allen with a 10 millimeter box end. I like to spin it on from the Allen side and hold with my index finger the box end side. We're just gonna repeat the same on this side as well. Slide the bolt in. Put a washer, then put your nut, get it started till it stops. Hold and spin. Next guys, we're gonna be attaching the top of our front bumper support. We're gonna slide in these nut these bolts make sure we put the rubber spacer between so we're not scratching our new go-kart as we make sure we have alignment here on the hole there we go and like i've been saying always put a washer then your nut snug it up with your hand first then we're going to grab our four millimeter and our 10 millimeter and you can do this with either the box end side or the ratcheting end and just tighten up snug. We'll make some adjustments to this later once we add the front bumper to the angle that we want on it. Just nice and snug. Don't have to over tighten it. And we'll do the same thing on this side. Add a washer and we're going to throw on the nut as we spin it on, switch hands, put this, uh, Tighten it up, make sure we have that in the right direction. Makes it easy. Next guys, we're gonna go ahead and mount up our side pods onto the frame. 
we'll, uh, we'll just go through that one side at a time. So here we go. I like to do this at eye level. I like to grab my side pod, slide it in according. And if it's a little bit out, just kind of move it with your hand. We'll kind of give it a little hug here, slide it all the way in. Make sure it's not binding. We're good to go. Uh, some of these side pods will come pre-drilled. Uh, this one is, so we'll actually just feed the bolts through. And once that gets done, uh, we'll be good to go. Here we are guys. We're just doing the other side, mounting this up again on your knees. Try and get it a little bit in, make sure snug in there. We got a side pod. Next guys, we're going to throw on the front bumper. Come over here, make sure it doesn't have to be centered right now, but just lift up, push down. We have a front bumper. We'll add the clips in here in a second. And we'll go from there. Here we go, guys. We have the, uh, the clips for, to hold on the front bumper. So basically these will work really well. They're nice. I like them. You can thumb screw them in and out for tightness. So if you're, I usually start at the end just to see where we are. The slide from the top, from the top here, down around the bottom. And you just want to feel it out. If it's pretty loose, that seems loose. So if you thought that would pop off, pop it off again. And we'll tighten these up a couple turns. Mount it back down. That feels really good. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Top, then the bottom, push it down. Doesn't seem like it'll pop off very easily. We got our front bumper mounted. So uh, on to the next step. We'll go, go ahead and do the rear bumper and we'll go from there. Guys, we have the rear bumper here. We're gonna go ahead and mount this up. As I walk around here, just easily slide this in. We have the rubber stoppers that will expand inside the tube. I'll use this, give it a hug, kind of push it with your body. There we go. Work it in there. Takes a little bit. Uh, if need, you can use a mallet, um, which I'll probably use here in a second to tap it in. So let me grab that. I like to use a rubber mallet instead of a hammer because you do not want to mushroom your uh, stay here that holds on the rear bumper. So just lightly tap evenly on both sides. You can alternate between and uh, until it's all the way in. Hold it. There we go. Almost there. Guys, you want to go to the stop. We have a black stop here that will end up at the end of the chassis tube. So that's it. That's where we want it to be flush against there. And we'll tighten these up uh, with a 17 millimeter wrench. Here we go guys, with our uh, 17 millimeter wrench, I'm gonna slide it on, spin that as we feel it tightening it up. You will feel tension. And this doesn't have to be super tight, but you want it to be snug enough so the bumper won't fall off as you're going down the track. So guys, next we're gonna mount the front fairing, front fender, whatever you would like to call it. Uh, so basically you're just gonna take these rubber grommets, press them on here. Make sure you get them on each side. And in the front. These will come with a cotter pin to slide, so as you press, apply pressure, slide it down, push it to the side. These are the same. I like to go from the top, come around down there. And that will be the same on the other side. Hey guys, so we're gonna go ahead and our, unbox our DWT carding wheels. These are the LV Magnesiums that come standard with the Itals. So let's check them out. 
Ooh, always nice. Washers, stickers, set those to the side. Brand new. Unpackage. Wheels are very easy to install. Just gonna slide them on. Make sure you line up all the holes. And they should sit there snug. Hey guys, so quick tip here. Um, these are magnesium M-series wheels. So we recommend that you use the washers and the nuts for these wheels to keep them securely on. Uh, I know that on a lot of other Cardi applications, they don't use washers. Um, these ones specifically come with these directions. So we're gonna do what they say. Washer, nut, we'll just keep them, start them off easy with our fingers. We'll come back. Again, we have a washer and a nut, start them off easy. And one more time. Nice wheels, guys. We got some nice wheels here. Always feels good to unbox these, yeah? Yeah, it does, man. I love the feel of new wheels. It's like it's like putting new rims on like a car, right? Yeah, yeah. It just changes everything. Looks better. Yeah, it's probably the placebo effect. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> you know they. You know what they say? When you put a new pair of rims on a car, it completely changes it. Wonder. I agree. On yeah. a go kart, yeah, yeah, for sure. You put on like gold. If you put on gold wheels, it just changes everything. You're not a fan of gold wheels. Are oh, you? that's right. I'm that's not. right. <laughs> I'm not. Though. Oh, one thing to add in here, guys. We have we do have um, in in these DWT wheels. They come with a tool for your bead locks. We haven't really touched on that. We'll get to that in a different series. But don't lose these. It's nice to have so you don't use Allen wrenches on the inside of your wheels. Ooh, that's a good tip, guys. So let's hold on to that. Right there, hopefully you guys can see that. So guys, we're uh, back to using, putting wheels on, same as well, the tools that we use to take them off in other videos. We're gonna 10 millimeter deep well socket on a ratchet. Uh, especially with new wheels, I like to use uh, hand tools instead of power tools. Uh, this way that we know we're not stripping anything out and we can feel them snug all the way down. Well, guys, that's it for today's vlog on Go-Kart Academy. We put together an adult kart Rapido from a Tau Kart. The only thing that we have left to do, which we're not going to do right now, is we need to put, to, put on the, the sticker kit and what you'll need for this is you need a uh, hot gun. A heat gun. A yeah. heat gun. Yeah. A heat gun for something like this. But other than that, there's a couple other things that we need to do, obviously, um, for our clients. So this is one of the carts that we're building for one of our customers. What are some of the other things that we need to make sure that we do in preparation for them to pick it up? So what we'll have to do is we'll have to mount some tires. We'll get feedback from them, what, what compound, what tire they want to run. We'll also uh, have them decide on an engine. I believe this customer was going to go with either a Tillotson or a LO206 Briggs & Stratton. Um, this cart was when it was ordered, we ordered it again with a 30 millimeter rear axle for those applications. Uh, you know, so again, it's all customer uh, centric. We try to customize our builds and our orders as we go um, and just have a better customer experience. Uh, again, as well with uh, the seat position, we'll have to uh, have to get the customer in, fit the seat and see exactly which one they're gonna go with. Um, and uh, what the what the positioning will be. Um, Absolutely. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, putting together an, a, a repeat a towel cart from a towel cart. Uh, guys, make sure that you smash the like button, subscribe, let people know about Go Kart Economy as well as 893 Motorsports. Thanks so much for being here, guys. We'll see you next time. See you guys. Thanks.